A very good afternoon and welcome to our session on the topic heavy prolonged period menstrual cramps and PCOD. We are glad to have Dr. Vani Puri with us today to help us understand the topic in detail. Also, if you have any doubts, any queries related to this topic, you can ask the doctor via comment section or you can uh, drop your doubts in the comment section so that we can take it later. But for all the details and important information, stay tuned till the last of the session and the doctor will be taking your questions at the last. So stay tuned. And now I share the student doctor. Doctor, you have all of it. Yeah. Uh, a very good morning and uh, a very happy uh, Navratras, uh, the Divine Navratras to everyone and happy Durga Ashtami from my side to everyone. So, today we are going to talk on a very, very important topic that is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is also called as polycystic ovarian disease. So, a lot of people, they ask, what is the difference in between the two? So, there is actually no difference between the two. It is a syndrome. Syndrome means it is a constellation or a group of many symptoms in one person, in one patient, in one individual. So polycystic ovarian syndrome, it presents differently in different people, different patients. So let's see how it presents. So I'm sure that everybody of you, each one of you have seen a girl or a lady who is very fat and very struggling to reduce her weight and she is uh, she's always a failure to reduce her weight. A lot of facial hairs are there, acne is there, she is facing a lot of irregularities in the menstruation. She is married but struggling to conceive. So I'm sure you have seen this patient and this patient is right, you are. This patient is suffering from polycystic ovarian syndrome. You can see the acne over here uh, and the un, uh, unnatural hairs, which are not uh, usually present in the female, the male pattern of hairs, which are seen uh, in polycystic ovarian syndrome patients. So coming up to the, what is actually the polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is an imbalance when the ovaries, they produce excessive amount of hormone, which is known as testosterone. Testosterone naturally is a male hormone. It is not a female hormone. It is a male hormone, right? And you don't have regular periods. You don't have them very frequently as in 28 days or 30 days, uh, how the normal uh, females are menstruating. And definitely they are not regular. They may have periods which last for many days. So, uh, for example, the patient is bleeding after 50 days, suppose, right? So now in this period, she bleeds for a longer duration, like she bleeds for 20 days or 15 days together. So we usually see these complaints in the patient of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So uh, uh, she is not having any period since many uh, months. The patient comes to us by like not having menses for five months, three months, four months. And they confuse it. They are married. They confuse it with pregnancy. Right. So this type of presentation are there in the polycystic ovarian disease. And you may have increased testosterone hormone in the blood and its features like I have shown you the previous slide that the patient is having unnatural hairs on the cheeks, on the chin, on the back, you know, and the acne. Lot of acne are there in the back of the patient, on the uh, chest of the patient, on the face of the patient. The skin is so oily. So all these are the symptoms of increased testosterone in the blood, which is seen in the polycystic ovarian syndrome patient. So there are the typical thing is you can see on the ultrasound, you can see these, these small, small follicles, which are arranged in the periphery of the ovary, right? They are arranged on the periphery, like uh, on the outskirts, on the outer edges of the ovary. So these are the follicles which are not mature. The problem is, I will tell you in the next slide, the problem is there is an ovulation. That means there is no ovulation in the patient of PCOS. They fail to ovulate. They fail to make eggs from their ovaries. And uh, against that, the normal woman, uh, she make egg from either ovary, she release an egg, uh, one egg 
on each menstruation. Okay, so these are the problems with the PCOS patients. So you can see the graph. The normal menstruation, there is there are two hormones, FSH and LH, which are released from the um, pituitary, from the brain of the uh, uh, female. So what does they do? They they just recruit the follicles. They recruit the follicles from the ovary to for the ovulation, right? So this is the normal, uh, you know, uh, rise in the FSH and LH in the normal patient. But in case of PCOS, this rise in FSH and LH does not occur. And here in the uh, in the lower part of the uh, chart, we see the estrogen and progesterone. So in the PCOS patient, there is an increased level of estrogen and the estrogen is converted into testosterone. All these things happen and this patient failed to ovulate, right? I think I'm making a sense to you. So how do we diagnose? How do we come to a conclusion? Okay, this patient is having a polycystic ovarian syndrome. So first of all, the patients come to us with an irregular period or absence of periods. They don't have periods or they have periods which, which are irregular, which are uh, spaced uh, uh, to a longer, longer duration, like two months, three months, like that. And they don't know how, when they are going to, you know, uh, menstruate. And they are having few menstrual cycles in a year. So if the patient is having less than nine cycles, the patient is known as oligomenorrhea means having less menses. Oligo means it is scanty, having less menses during the whole year. So whole year in 12 months, the patient is menstruating less than nine months, right? Uh, and they are having, they are not regular. This is the most common sign seen in the PCOS patients. Now, the second thing is that the hormones are raised, the androgen. The androgen, which is the basically male hormone, which is not a female hormone, which is raised in the PCOS patient. Either you can see in the lab test they are raised or you can see the features. As I have told you, the features are facial hairs, La, increase in the body hairs, lot of acne over the face, over the back and the chest and etc, etc. And the having the face, uh, facial hairs is known as hirsutism. Having a male pattern of hair is known as hirsutism. This thing and on ultrasound scan, when the patient goes for a scan, she is diagnosed with a polycystic ovarian uh, uh, ovaries that means the ovaries are having small small follicles two to nine millimeters of small small follicles which are more than 20 okay so these are the three uh, uh, criterias and out of these three criterias a woman who is more than 19 years means who is an adult woman should have two by three that means two symptoms two of these criteria should be there from these three criterias but in case of adolescents, which are, you know, which are adolescent girls that are before 19 years, we have to have all the three uh, features to label them as polycystic ovarian syndrome, right? So we have seen that it is a hormonal imbalance. Everybody knows nowadays, everybody is studying about this syndrome and produce excessive of uh, testosterone that is a male hormone again. They may not have period often or regular, right? And the, these are the things. So, so what is the cause? What is the cause? Why there is PCOS? Why there is PCOS in one patient and another patient is not suffering from PCOS? So the likely theoretical causes, nobody know, knows the exact cause, what is the exact cause. But yes, there are theories which, uh, you know, explain how the PCOS is there. So there is a low-grade low inflammation. There's an inflammation in the body. We know that the people who are obese, they have a lot of inflammation in their bodies. All the inflammatory markers are raised in these patients. So there is, if there is a long-term inflammation, this can lead to a polycystic ovarian disease. Also, there are hereditary, hereditary causes means that if the mother is having, if the grandmother is having, the, the granddaughter or the daughter will also have these symptoms. So they run in the families. Also, the insulin resistance. Insulin resistance means there is a lot of insulin in the body, but it is not acting. 
the body is not able to use the insulin so this is the insulin resistance is also a cause access of male hormones also is a cause it is also a theory and uh, exact cause as i told is not at all uh, till now it is uh, uh, you know um, one cause is not known okay so now we coming to the complications well, what complications a pcos patient can find or where she can be you know uh, uh, get entangled into the spider web so she can have a difficult time to get pregnant as i as i have shown this that she is having a difficult time to get pregnant these pcos patient because they are not going to ovulate they are not making eggs so they have difficult time to ovulate they have to take a help of a medical professional to uh, get pregnant okay now they can have the spontaneous abortions as well so the patient she is get, getting pregnant she can have a spontaneous abortion spontaneous miscarriage within 3 months right this is also because of the imbalance of the hormones she can have preterm births okay she can have a total metabolic syndrome what is metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome is that the patient is obese especially the obesity is around the tummy okay especially the it is around the tummy around the stomach lot of fat is there right she can have hypertension she can have raised blood pressure she can have insulin resistance we already have uh, talked about this she can have high levels of lipids in her body in her blood so what happens is when these lipids are raised they get accumulated in uh, different different parts of the body and different parts different uh, vessels of the body as well okay and uh, they can have increased ldl levels as well so as i have shown in this picture there is a despigmentation depigmentation of the neckline okay so there is a black black depigmentation it is known as acanthosis nigricans this is also found in the pcos patient you have seen many patients like that and it is also a symptom of metabolic syndrome as i have told you syndrome is it is a constellation of many 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 things signs and symptoms right so here you can see a patient who is snoring so these patients can have obstruct obstructive sleep apnea syndrome so what is it that when the patient is sleeping in the night because of the obesity the the respiratory tracts become obstructed and this patient is not able to sleep properly because of the hypoxia the oxygen is not going through the lungs because of the obstruction so they are not having a good sleep and that is why they have sleepiness in the uh, morning hours so here they can be and uh, we have seen that these patients are usually obese these uh, we have talked about the increased lipids so they can also uh, you know uh, get uh, uh, get deposited in the liver okay so these patients can have diabetes diabetes during pregnancy type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes is a diabetes which is seen from the childhood when the uh, when like the age of 10 11 okay so this is a type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes is at the uh, at the later age they get it okay so that is to a type 2 diabetes all these diabetes are found in this pcos patients okay there is a fear of endometrial cancer because these patients they are more prone to the uh, endometrial hyperplasia what is endometrial hyperplasia there is a increased proliferation of the skin of the endometrium basically the uh, skin of the uterus which is known as endometrium and this uh, under the influence of estrogen it uh, increases in thickness and increases in thickness and after a long time it leads to hyperplasia that means a preliminary state from the cancer and then endometrial cancer as well so because of the you know body shaming and they don't like their body because they are obese and they have lot of pigmentation lot of hirsutism no man, no woman is going to like this uh, all these things na so they, they usually get the depression anxiety etc etc so these are very common in patients so we have to take the care of the mental health as well so in the coming slides i am going to talk about this so mainly frequent they have jot down all the questions which the patients usually ask me so they ask me ma'am 
how, at what age the PCOS gets started. So the PCOS, that is polycystic ovarian syndrome, it gets started at the time of puberty. What is puberty? When you get your secondary sexual characteristics, the increase in the breast size, the hair growth in the axilla and the pubic areas, this is puberty, right? So at this time, the, uh, the PCOS starts and mostly it is diagnosed when the patient start, uh, to, starts, uh, tries to conceive after the marriage. So they are not getting pregnant and that is why they come to us for the help. So at the age of 20 to 30 years, they come to usually come to know because uh, all these otherwise the symptoms are, then you know, this, okay, this is normal. They just discard the symptoms, right? Then the higher chance if they are obese and they have a family history. So if the patient is having any family history of PCOS or they are obese, they are tend to having they tend to have the uh, PCOS earlier, right? So how common it is? It is very common. It is around 15% uh, of the patients, they suffer from the polycystic ovarian syndrome. And in my OPD, if I see and other, my friend's OPD also, I can um, assess that every one patient in four to five patients in adolescence, basically, the children who are coming to us are PCOS. So now coming to the question number three, that what are the main symptoms? We have already discussed about the symptoms. They have irregular menses, they have abnormal hair growth, male pattern of hair growth, they have acne, they have obesity, they have darkening of the skin. One thing I have not talked about is these skin tags. These skin tags can also be seen in cases of polycystic ovarian disease and there is a thinning of the hair. The density of the hair decreases because of the testosterone hormone. There is a alopecia or there is a balding of the hair. And definitely the patients who are married, they also find hard time to conceive and they are uh, they face infertility issues. So the next question is, can I have PCOS without any symptoms? That I don't have PCOS, I don't have any symptoms, still I can have PCOS. Oh yes, it can. you can have uh, PCOS without any symptoms. Some symptoms are unnoticed. Okay, so this is very important because, because this, there is a very big because, because the PCOS, it, you know, it affects the patients from the teenagers, that is adolescents, to the menopause till the patient dies. So it is having a long, long, you know, journey from adolescence to the menopause. The, she will not leave, the PCOS will not leave you. You can control this. You cannot, you know, get rid of it. So this disease is, this syndrome is very, very important and you have to take care of your health. And we will talk how you can prevent this very shortly. Okay, so it can be challenging during pregnancy. So uh, whenever the patients with the PCOS, okay, they get pregnant, uh, maybe spontaneously or maybe due to some uh, uh, assisted reproductive techniques, then the patient can have the gestational diabetes mellitus. Gestational diabetes mellitus means that diabetes which has arisen from the uh, pregnancy only. It was not before. And definitely she can have diabetes predating the pregnancy also like uh, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, type 1, type 2, non-insulin diabetes, uh, dependent diabetes mellitus. All those she can have. She can have hypertension during pregnancy. Uh, from the day one, she starts the pregnancy and she can have pregnancy-induced hypertension also. A spontaneous miscarriage, we have already talked about it. It can also happen at preterm birth and operative intervention because operative intervention because the babies of these mothers are also big as the mothers are. So they are also obese, the mothers are obese, the babies are also big. So most of the time they, they face a lot of injury issues also, shoulder dystocia and forceps delivery and then cesarean section and everything like that. So now coming to the diagnosis, how do you diagnose? How, do, how a doctor, how a healthcare professional diagnose that you are case of PCOS? We have already talked about the three symptoms. Now let, let's, let us look how the doctors are going to look at you. 
So your healthcare provider will take your full history. What is your history? What are your symptoms? Are you facing acne? Are you having hirsutism, like uh, hairs on the uh, chin or uh, cheek line or back, or you are having some um, like um, you are having problems to uh, get pregnant? All these history can be taken by your doctors, and then the family history is also taken. We have talked about if the family is having PCOS, you have more chances to get. PCOS. Your weight and BP should be uh, will be monitored. Your physical examination will be done. You know uh, your physical examination as per the hair growth, the density of hair, any alopecia, any skin tag, any acanthosis, negligence, any depigmentation, dark pigmentation over your neck, or the breast creases or the thigh creases. Here the acanthosis, negligence is seen more. So your doctor will see all these things and the pelvic examination. If you are not getting pregnant, you are hard. You are having a hard time to get pregnant, and the blood investigations finally because we know that the uh, male hormone is increased and other investigations are also done by your doctor. And then the pelvic ultrasound. I'm sorry for this spelling mistake. This pelvic ultrasound. Right? And now coming to the management, which is very, very important. So, so first is the lifestyle modification. What I teach to my patient is lifestyle modification is patient, patient guided, patient controlled. The control is in the hands of patient. So if you modify your lifestyle, there are other uh, uh, factors also in the pathology of PCOS that nowadays we are not working physically. We are working more mentally. We are not working as like physically more. In the olden days, the, pay, pay, uh, the uh, people and the you know women were working more physically. They were doing all household works, you know, all the villages and all. We know still there are villages. So that is why this this um, PCOS is less in the villages because they are working more of the physical work. So we are not going to the physical work nowadays. We are doing more mental work. That is also a part that the, we are having PCOS. So it is it is recommended that you should exercise moderate exercise. Uh, you can have different different sort of exercises. That one day you can do yoga, other day you can do aerobics, other than you can do pilates, other than you you can have walk. All these things you can do. You can just change the type of the exercise also. Now coming to the main thing, the the diet. The diet is very important and is responsible for treating or managing or controlling the PCOS more than uh, more than uh, you know eighty percent. So other thing is uh, meditation. Meditation is also very important because it because we have seen the PCOS is having a lot of stress, lot of anxiety issues, and they are taken care with the meditation. So your doctor can uh, tell you to get uh, insulin sensitizers, the hormone treatment, the medications to block the effect of androgens because we know that the patients with the PCOS, they have a lot of, lot of testosterone, the male hormone in them. And that is why the lot of, you know, uh, the symptoms are like that. So the medications can be given. The drugs the, in the patients who are not able to conceive, the drugs to induce the ovulation, the drugs to induce the egg release can be given. And uh, after all, if they are not working with them, then the, they can do surgeries. Um, there, there are surgeries also. The laparoscopic drilling of the ovaries can be done, especially in the PCOS who are not obese, who are very lean and thin. And definitely the in vitro, in vitro fertilization technique also can help to get pregnant if the other problem, uh, other uh, management patterns have failed. So the next question usually asked is, does PCOS go away? Can I get rid of PCOS? Um, till now, till now, the studies say that no, you cannot get rid of the PCOS permanently, but the control is in your hand. You can modify the disease, you know, you can make the disease diluted. So it is in your hands. You have to manage your diet. You have to manage your weight. Basically, decreasing your weight 5 to 10% can, you know, may, makes your menstrual very regular, menstrual cycle very regular. This has also been seen. So very important of your own weight management, your own diet management, your own lifestyle modification and everything like that and meditation also. 
Okay, now the PCOS and the menopause, uh, as I have told you before also, it doesn't leave the women from adolescence. That means from the where she has got the menses to she dies, the menopause. Okay, so the hormonal changes may resolve the symptoms, but the long term complications are there. I have told you the long term complications are many there. We have seen that uh, there can be hyperlipidemia, means the lipids can be raised. These lipids can be, you know, uh, can get uh, deposited in different arteries and the liver and the different organs uh, uh, leading to their uh, problems, their, their diseases. Okay, and uh, they can have diabetes, they can have hypertension, all these things, they can have endometrial cancer, all these things, they still prevail in PCOS when they go through menopause. So the people ask me, I'm a PCOS patient, can I get pregnant? Definitely, yes, you can get pregnant either, you know, uh, spontaneously or you can get pregnant, uh, you know, with the rep assisted reproductive techniques. Can I prevent PCOS? Uh, yes, you can modify the disease. You can prevent, you cannot prevent PCOS, but you can modify the disease. You can dilute the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the aggression of the disease, you know. The disease amplitude can be modified. Does it put me at the risk of other health disorders? We have already seen that it, it puts you in so many disorders, hypertension, blood pressure, diabetes, you know, endometrial cancer, and so on and so forth. And how to cope with the PCOS, you know? How to cope with the PCOS, we have already discussed in the management of the PCOS that you have to maintain a very good lifestyle, a good divine lifestyle, I can say, that you should eat good, Eat good means that you should decrease the carbohydrate diet, you should increase your protein diet, you should increase decrease your lipid diet, means fat diet, you should uh, uh, take more of the multivitamins and all, all these things and you should have a good lifestyle. That will uh, how you cope the PCOS. And when should I visit my doctor? Whenever you are having any problem, whenever you are having facing any uh, uh, problem, like you're facing the problem of infertility, you're facing the menstrual irregularities, or you're having depigmentation of your uh, face or underarms or anywhere, you're having skin tags, whatever, you're having facial hairs, then this is the time to visit your doctor. So I have done with it. And many thanks for patient hearing. So I will be very happy to take the uh, questions, if any. Any questions, please? 